Let's uh, quickly explain the uh, source of uh, the uh, human stupidity that believes that uh, there's such thing as a photon particle, which has uh, absolutely no basis in reality. It's a completely an arbitrary concept. No basis in reality. Uh, it is uh, strictly rooted in atomism. Quantum means quantity. Quantity is materialism. Materialism is atomism. Peanut butter and jelly, atomism and materialism. We live in a materialistic age. All of general relativity is based on the reification of things that don't exist. CERN Laboratory, they're looking for magical unicorn particles. <laughs> they should be understanding what the hell a field is and field perturbation interactions. Mother Nature doesn't have a bag of magic particles. There's no such thing as a photon. Oh, sure there is. Oh, really? Well, why don't you go find me a single shred of evidence for the notion of a photon? It has zero evidence in any output of any experiment. Oh, sure it does. You know, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect. Um, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. By the way, he did not discover that at all. Um, correct observations have no connection to con correct uh, conclusions or explanations. I can discover a new phenomena in nature, which I have actually done. Um, I've proven that in my book and countless other videos, stuff that nobody on earth has ever seen before regarding magnetism. I can come up with correct observations of new natural phenomena, but that does not mean my explanation for how the hell that works are connected. It's like, oh my god, so-and-so discovered, and this is a really big problem of the humanity. Well, so-and-so discovered a new phenomenon. This is his explanation. Just because he discovered it, and Einstein actually didn't discover that, does not mean that the explanation is correct. People actually ask me, they say, well, you know, relativity is proven correct because of a GPS uh, correction. And, you know, we have these... Uh, these are satellites, global positioning satellites, and they have to actually correct uh, for the kinematic movement. And uh, they say, well, that's proof of relativity. Uh, no, it's not. It's ex actually, it's proof of what Nikola Tesla said it was and Hanwe Poincaré, from which Einstein actually stole about 95% of his material. There is nothing in Einstein that's new. Nothing. He even got the notion of E equals MC squared from Hanwe Poincaré. There's absolute irrefutable proof of that. That kinematic correction in global positioning is due to, and this is exactly what it's called, EM retardation, EMR, electromagnetic retardation. It is nothing other than a phase shift due to motion in a given field. It is a kinematic effect. This was understood by Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, Nikola Tesla, Hanway Poincaré, it is absolutely not proof of relativity. People always bring up the GPS BS to me. Let's take a look at something. You know how you drop something in a pool of water, it'll actually ripple, and then it'll actually, if you slow it down, you'll actually see this. You'll see a little water droplet. Oops. It looks like I was kind of trying to power the, uh, power the iPad off. You'll actually see this little water droplet here. Everybody's kind of seen that, right? Here's another example of it. You drop something in the water, and then, of course, you have... This is exactly... And if you combine these, stack these, you know, billions and billions of them, this is what you have, which is what light is. And this is where the false notion of a photon particle came from. High-energy light has more of these droplet pulses per unit frequency than does, say, red-spectrum light. As you go towards the blue, higher energy. Also, why uh, if you were exposed to uh, UV and whatnot, I mean, that's where it will actually pit, not only give you a sunburn, it'll penetrate deeper than that, and you'll end up with internal radiation burns, X-rays, you know, cosmic rays. See this little drop of water right here? That is a pulse perturbation. PP, pulse perturbation. Light is a coaxial circuit. Light does not move. It is a field perturbation. And what you have is rarefactions and compressions in between those transverse modalities where a dielectric pulse is manifest. You have transverse, whether that's circular, um, EM, or it's a, a, a polarized EM. doesn't matter what the transverse electrical magnetic component is of the coaxial nature of light. You have these pulse perturbations exactly like this. This is the perfect 100% analogy. I hate iPads. iPads are always screwing up. 
You just touch them and it just wants to jump to everything else. Pulse perturbation. Right? Pulse perturbation. It's pretty simple, right? You see the drop of water there? Pulse perturbation. This is where the notion of a photon came from. That is a dielectric pulse. Dielectric pulse. Light is a z-axis longitudinal dielectric, which rarefactions and compressions, and resultant to those rarefactions and compressions, we have transverse electrical and magnetic reciprocations. The dielectric is no different than the plane of inertia on a magnet. I've shown you the plane of inertia on a magnet like a billion times in a thousand videos, right? Right. The photon has no basis in reality. It is nothing other than the brain fart of intellectually dead mental midget scumbags of general relativity and quantum mechanics, which is based in nothing other than stinking, gross, perverted, mental stupidity materialism, i.e. atomism. There were ancient Greek atomists, and this is the exact same crap that existed in ancient Greece. They had atomists. Atomists are materialists. Oh, what's another name for materialism? Uh, quantity. Quantum. Quantum, quantity, materialism, atomism. You see, this is why the, the, the a-holes in the particle accelerator labs and CERN, they are chasing unicorn farts and uh, you know, these unicorn, <laughs> they're chasing unicorn particles. We're going to find the new uh, quantum bobo particle next, which, you know, has to, for, you know, give us a million dollars of funding. I mean, really, that is exactly how they work. We are certain with new mathematical formulas that there is this... Uh, uh, a zippy doo dah particle, but we just need a few, you know, billion dollars, and it might take us ten years to finally find it. You know, that's how these people live. That's their bread and their butter. It's like, well, it has to be right. I mean, they have billion dollar machines buried in the ground. You know, they're smashing atoms. <sighs> this is what Nikola Tesla meant by "you can think deeply and yet still be insane." That's a direct quote from Nikola Tesla. The the you know. You, you ever been? Well, you probably never been. Uh, the mental wards and asylums where these padded rooms are, you know, a lot of those people aren't stupid. Some of them are, you know, brilliant, deep thinkers. You know, you can be a crazy SOB and still be absolutely insane. And the insane wards are in full of deep things. Some of these insane wards, and you could read about this, are full of like grandmasters of chess. I mean, they could sit there and like, you know, pick their nose and stare at the ceiling and still beat you at chess with their other hand out of the corner of their eye. They are deep thinkers, but they are effing insane. And this is what you people certainly don't get. Oh, he's such a deep thinker. I mean, he's a chess master. Yeah, but he's an insane idiot, you know. People don't see, don't see a contradiction. It's like, well, he's such a, he's such a smart guy. You know, I've seen some of the smartest people. I mean, they are really smart, but you know, they're the, they're the people that actually digging in the toaster with a with a metal fork and they electrocute themselves. You can be a deep thinker and be just bat crap insane. Nikola Tesla and the nature of light. The fascination of the false electromagnetic theory of light. He was asked about what light is. Nikola Tesla denied that what uh, we think light is. Advanced by Maxwell and subsequently experimentally investigated by Hertz was so great that even now, although controverted, the absurd scientific minds are under its sway. This theory supposed the existence of a medium which was solid yet permitted bodies to pass through it without resistance. The absurdity of this uh, view is tenuous behind this conception. Light was wrongly considered such a phenomenon bound up in that kind of medium, namely transmitting transverse vibrations like a solid. What then can light to be if not a transverse vibration of the medium? I consider this extremely important. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal, what I said, z-axis radial, uh, disturbance in the ether involving alternate compressions and rarefactions. Light can be nothing else than like his analogy, like a sound wave in the ether, which is exactly what it is. This is also proof. This is also him saying exactly what Walter Russell said, and what I'm saying is that light does not travel. There is no such thing as a speed of light. It's a rate of induction of a perturbation of the field. Light, yeah, let me repeat that for you. There is no such thing that, as light traveling. Light does not travel. It is a field perturbation. 
and its supposed speed is a rate of induction in the medium. Light does slow down about 17% or so as it passes through glass. Any sort of medium that, gla that light passes through, it does slow down. So light is not a constant speed. It is a rate of induction through X medium, whether that medium be you know, uh, space, through the air. We also know through like a dense fog, we can actually bend light because of the water dropping. You know, that's, that's water. Light is bending as it's passing through a different type of medium, dihydrous oxide, i.e. water. You know, what the hell do you think a prism works? How the hell do you think a prism works, a glass prism? The blue light is more energetic and it gets thrown further away than the low energy red light. That the hell, that's how, that's how the hell a prism works. That's how the hell a damn rainbow works. You know, you kind of have to have these water droplets in the sky and sunshine, you end up with a rainbow. Why the hell does a rainbow occur? Well, a rainbow occurs because blue light is radically more effective as it passes through the medium of dihydrous oxide, i.e. water, than does red light. So you end up with white light doing this number. Blue light over here, red light over here. This appears clearly if it's first realized that there's no Maxwellian ether. But, you know, there's been a million theories of ether. That doesn't mean that you're refuting the ether. There have been countless insane theories of ether. That does not mean that someone is refuting the ether. It just means they refute insane theories of the ether. Um, he goes on to talk about how even a small candle can project light with the exact same speed as the blazing sun, which has immensely higher power and temperature. Um, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, all of that is a quote from Nikola Tesla. Anyway... The photon is a purely arbitrary concept. There is absolutely zero proof on the face of this Earth anywhere in any crack of science or literature of a photon particle. It is nothing other than a misunderstanding of the nature of light, which is a z-axis radial dielectric pulse perturbation rarefaction and compression with resultant transverse electrical and magnetic phenomena effects. Light does not travel is a field perturbation. Light does not have a speed. That's a rate of induction. And there sure as shit is no such damn thing as a damn photon particle. None. It is only a stupid, pathetic, insane, mental midget misunderstanding of the nature about what the hell light is. And the, Mother Nature, definitely, sure as hell, just as sure as I'm sitting you, I can guarantee you one thing above all else, the notion of a wave particle duality, Mother Nature does not deal in, in dualities. There is no duality in nature. Duality is inherently denotatively a premise of contradiction. It's kind of like, man, I got some dehydrated water here. That's a duality. That's a paradox. You know, it's some dehydrated water. <laughs> they used to sell those in a can as a novelty. A can of dehydrated water. You just add water to it. <laughs> Mother Nature doesn't deal in dualities. There are, in the truth of the universe, there are no frigging effing damn stinking bleeping bleepity bleep dualities. Nor is there any such thing as a damn photon particle. Whether you believe me or not, I don't give a damn. Uh, I'm right, and if you think that's egotistical, I still don't give a damn. If you think you know more than field theory about more about field theory than I do, let's have at it. We'll debate, and you'll lose. You will lose miserably, because there is zero evidence for a photon particle. Zero. Zip zilch none. Okay. Logic and wisdom above all else. Okay, and definitely not atomism. Okay. Luxi Veritas. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or send me a pizza, whatever makes you most happy, or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Either one works great for me. Bye. <laughs>